Welcome back. Um, I hope you all brought something to drink or grabbed some food. And now we can um, explore the game Swoboda 1945 Liberation um, together. Um, as I said yesterday, the idea behind the Eco-Memoration Convention is to pair discussions with hands-on experiences. And now we're turning to a hands-on experience. And I'm um, very happy that we will be joined by Vichisla, the lead game designer um, of the game Svoboda 1945, and gameplay by Christian Huberts, and um, the master of ceremonies will be uh, Markus Richter. So I hand over to you and enjoy this first-hand experience of a historical narrative mystery. Thank you very much, Fiona. Thank you for introducing us. I will just like I would like to introduce another guest, the VIP, so to say, the game itself, Svoboda 1945 Liberation, a game about the end of the Second World War and the things that happened before and after in a region in a small Czech village in a region near the German border, which is also called Sudetenland. With Schisler, I have a question before we start. And this is the game is made for educational purposes, but the game is also available via standard default gaming platforms. Before we start, is there any prior knowledge context essential to know before we start the game? Or is it just like for anyone can just download it and play? No, the, the, like, there is educational version, which, is, which was made much earlier and which is like yeah, used in Czech high schools. And this one, uh, which came out under the name Sovereign 1945 Liberation, is for anybody 12 plus. So it's like for general audience. And we actually made a huge effort uh, to translate the game into English and to kind of local localize it. We had like historians from 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 US who helped us to frame the context, the content of the game in a way it can be understood by international audience. And as we are, as you speak, actually. The German version is coming out in a few days, so that's kind of like I can announce that now the game is available in Czech and English, but in a week hopefully it will be available uh, for for yeah for computers and for 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 iOS for mobiles in with German subtitles. So um, we, yeah, we hope it it can be really understood like played by anyone interested in contested issues uh, of contemporary history. Mm. So we don't need to know anything about it. We of course, there are interesting things to talk about, but we'll do that later. Right now, without further ado, we I guess it's best to jump right in. Christian, please start the game. Starostka, kde jste? Jeďte rovnou ke škole, pan Vlk už tam na vás čeká. Až doděláte ten stavební průzkum, tak se stavte za mnou, ať to dorazíme. Naschledanou. Vy jste od těch památkářů? Tak necháte to zbourat? Ale jo, fotte si, co chcete. Začnem na půdě. Já si tam stejně musím něco vzít. Pojďte. To jsou kluci z jednotky. Nikdo z nich už nežije. Tam se nedostanete. To si dávno zamknul, klepal. Tak, 
So I think we'll leave uh, Christian rummaging through the attic of an old schoolhouse while I want to ask my, my first questions. I think it's uh, there. There is uh, this is only a few minutes, but it's a uh, really you're putting the players in an exact time and place. And I think it's not even that because 2001 is somewhere written on the screen, because but because there's a dumb phone on the, in the car, the beloved old Nokia, and you're putting us into the year 2001. Why there? Well, yeah, the, the game actually starts, like, there's not the real start, it's like, a bit, a bit later, but we wanted to cut out something. So the game starts that you are sent as a as a um, historian uh, working from the National Heritage Institute to to this village um, uh, where uh, people want to. Some people want to demolish the school, or some local businessmen want to demolish the school and build expand his business. And other people ask that the school will be uh, declared a historical landmark, so it can be preserved. And you are going to this village to do very mundane job, you know, like explore the school and then you know take photos and then uh, make a decision and you will very soon discover that the school is actually a site of memory and that in the village there very turbulent events happened uh, during the war um, uh, after the war including the expulsion of certain germans from czechoslovakia including the yeah the uh, the liberation there were like heavy fightings in the area uh, and including the rise of communism to power, uh, where which, which, and all these issues are keeping the people in the village divided, and some of them simply want to commemorate these events, and some some of them want to forget them. And uh, the year is actually two thousand one, as I said previously. It's the same as our previous game, Attentat, for two. It's also set in two thousand one because in this game you are talking to people who lived through the Second World War, and uh, they in two thousand one they this was simply still possible. But, um, uh, you know, if you play the game today in 2020, uh, 2021, um, we don't have uh, that much direct eyewitnesses uh, among us. And that's actually a very interesting moment. I would like, maybe if you can switch the sound on. Uh, so we, yeah, because you accidentally, yeah. So you actually found a photo in the attic of a man uh, in a paramilitary uniform, or, you know, with a, with a gun, and you discover that he looks exactly like your uh, grandfather. And okay. that's where the story gets personal, and the kind of whole yeah, investigation begins. Uh, so as, as you see, the main game mechanics is actually that you talk to people. You simply talk I'm to... I, I, I want to come to that. Uh, mm -hmm. It's also our, our next scene. Before that, can you elaborate a little bit on why the name Swoboda? Because Swoboda is not only the name of the fictitious village in the game; mm -hmm. it also has several other meanings, right? Yeah, yeah. Swoboda means freedom, uh, like all, and and actually, it's kind of uh, in if we if in Czech context, uh, when you say Swoboda in forty five, everybody knows that the game is talking about uh, liberation. From Nazism and what happened after that, about the kind of post-war period. So we wanted to communicate that clearly to the Czech audience. Also, but for the international audience, we decided that the village would be called Soboda, which is just possible, which is a very possible name in, in, in Czech. So it's kind of it kind of makes sense without further explanation. Um, and um, here, like kind of you just because you found this uh, you found this uh, this uh, picture of uh, your granddad in the attic, and you don't know why he was there, what he was doing. You decide to stay in the village a bit longer, so you like you live, you you you, you uh, stay in the local like pension uh, during breakfast, and you decide to explore the village more, like under the pretext that you are collecting material for uh, your decision whether the building should be demolished or not. But in reality, you are also trying to find out what was your granddad doing here. In the village after the war and how it's connected to your own kind what, of uh, family what, story. Was that the plan from the beginning that the player or the the protagonist has a personal connection, or was that added later? Uh, it was like the the game was the game had a lot of like stages, and in the very early stage, uh, the personal link was missing, and uh, we found out that this like really helps a lot. Like it, it, it definitely, there was some piece was still you not know, there, and it really help you to kind of yeah uh, being kind of like emotionally interested in 
being emotionally interested in uh, in the game and in uh, kind of like there's like a goal, personal goal you want, you would like to you would like to mm-hmm. to see. There is actually another scene like that. Uh, once you leave the once you uh, leave the the building, that's actually uh, that's actually a scene where for the first time you see that there's a, uh, this lady arriving to the village, and uh, she was actually she's uh, uh, she was born in the, in the in the schoolhouse as a young kid, and she was expelled with her aunt uh, during the uh, expulsions in 1946. And um, and uh, you can talk to this person, and like so kind of like and we'll sh- like very soon we'll see the maybe main yes main screen with the with the village, and I I like to talk a bit more about the about that about the maybe. key. Maybe yeah. we can switch to the to the next end because, as you said, one of the key mechanics of the game Maybe is. If you can wait a bit, I, there's like okay. one more scene I would like to see, and then then, then okay. you can edit. Okay. <laughs> it's like for really a second, second. All right. I would, I just want to to show the map of the village because I think that's maybe important too. For the context, you can just yeah. So this this is what we're seeing now is uh, the map of the village. It's mm-hmm. kind of like the hub for the game. You're returning here, yeah. and you can see which persons you can talk to, and you can get a feeling for this again fictitious village. Is it and is is the map uh, the map of a real place or is it? It's actually actually we, we are combining three different villages. We are mm-hmm. combining three different villages also because we needed some. A place where we can film, you know. So we are like filming in. So we are actually filming in three different locations, and this village is like we merge together three different villages. They are all from uh, this part of Sudetenland. So like the kind of it's 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 real. I think the key mechanic of, or the key uh, feature of the game is that you can talk to really different people while you are staying in the village. You can talk to people who with various and very diverse background, uh, as I said, ethnicities or or political opinions, and they have very different, uh, they tell you very different evaluations of the past, including the, for example, the, the, the war or the post-war expulsions or the communist times, you know. You can talk to people, for example, being active or their family was active uh, in the in the communist collectivization where the communists um, uh, forcibly uh, took land of, uh, of small farmers and and forced them to join the uh, collective collective farms. You can talk to people who've been affected by that. You can, as I said, you can talk to this lady whose family was uh, expelled, and also she lost her parents during the expulsion. And uh, you can talk to pe- to people who've been there as a soldiers uh, responsible mm-hmm. for. So maybe for that. maybe right so, now let's switch and let's do a talk. Let's uh, look mm-hmm. at a dialogue with one of those people within the game, which is not so ser- not, not so much of an actor, but more like one who was influence whose life was changed because of the decisions of what was what happened in the past. Dobrý den. Pojďte. Co průzkum? No to je sice hezky, že vás zajímá historie naší školy, ale historie se nenajíte. Víte, že v našem kraji máme 20% nezaměstnanost? Nevíte. A víte, že půlka lidí, co vůbec sehnala práci, dělá za minimální mzdy? Taky nevíte. Klepalová firma je vlastně jediná firma, co tu funguje. Bože, zase pan Studnička. Ten si dost naivně představuje, že tady vybudují muzeum a že klepy z vesnice tady budou snad dělat zprávce sbírek. Podívejte se, já z toho bourání taky nejsem nadšená. Jsem se konec konců narodila hned vedle školy na tom statku. Co má klepala teď firmu? A ve škole zemřel můj bratr. To vám asi pan Studnička neřekl, že? Že byl u toho 8. května 45. <těk> Studnička. Bratrovi bylo 10 roku, když spolu šli vyvěšovat vlajku. Já myslím, že vůbec nevěděl, proč to dělá. Němci při tom vyvyšování bratra zastřelili. Máma se zhroutila a krátce po únoru 48 zemřela. No to bylo hrozný. Den po pohřbu mýho bratra se všichni schromáždili na náměstí před školou. No tam internovali místní Němce. Otec byl v steky bez sebe, já jsem si myslela, že někoho zabije, jak byl vsteklej. Já si do dneška vybavuju to 
napětí. A proto si myslím, že všichni ti kritici odsunu, myslím, že vůbec nic nechápou, protože nic toho nezažili. Šest let jsme byli pro Němce pod lidi, tak to nějak muselo jít ven. Jestli chcete vědět něco víc, tak vy jste mohli jít za krajcarem. Ten tady prožil konec války jako voják. OK, maybe right about now we can start talking again. Um, maybe something who doesn't know the game uh, or only knows it from here is interested in knowing how much freedom in these dialogue scenes yep. do you yeah, now, really do? Now you really start so now you're just starting the cultivation game, but it's fine. Uh, maybe if you can, it's okay. That was too too quick. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, yeah. So you have to, you you can choose from yep. from that from different dialogue options. How much does it really influence the game? Because sometimes in games, when you have this, it's like uh, it doesn't matter what you pick, uh, the story will be the same. How much does it influence the game or your? Uh, position to the characters well actually quite a lot um you we have like really different characters as i said and especially and they, they are their uh evolution of the past is very opinionated they, they tell, as i said they tell very different stories and uh, uh different uh, evolutions and depending how you approach them they might or even might not be willing to talk to you so that's uh that they in, in this game the Unlike Attentat 1942, where it was more like, uh, I would say, interactive museum, this game, uh, the characters in the village, are, they, they have their own agency. Some of them really want the past to be forgotten. Some of them really want to uh, kind of uh, justify what they did uh, by, you know, persuading you that it was inevitable and it was like uh, the only option to do, and, or, or at least like, you know, kind of trying to explain their motives for that. And some of them are, yeah, some of them simply want to want to really openly talk about it and, and or present really different perspective even to the others so that's it really matters and you can have different endings in the game and you can really see different scenes depending how you how you approach them and how you how also how carefully you choose your questions mm -hmm. so that you, you you can some people can actually refuse to talk to you after after what you've said or after what you what you've done so is is winning a game in a sense bringing all the people to open up to you or is is uh does does every like uh, crossroad in the game has the same worth? Well, no, it's it's really different. Like you can you can there are like huge chunks of content that which are there, and you can yeah you can you can you can miss that if you if you play uh, in a different way, which is actually what um, uh, so so actually your choices matter. That's the important thing. Like your mm -hmm. choices matter. Of course, there are, there are points where we need to deliver certain information, for example, for the context, especially for the international audience, we made some changes in the game that some elements or some some uh, memories uh, are now kind of obligatory that you we make sure that you always get certain certain memory. So you get the context because because for the uh, international audience, this was it was yeah it was not, not as easy to kind of grasp what was happening there because it's so multi layered. We are talking about kind of different time spans and different different regimes you know there's not there's not a regime there is communist regime there's a third republic in between it's uh it's quite complex so we try to help international players to navigate by more kind of uh mm. putting things into and yeah, the, what, what you just see now that's uh the game is equipped with encyclopedia and every single time a character mentions a name or mentions you know some event like collectivization or you know february 1948 uh yeah uh uh, like like a pop-up window will appear telling you there is encyclopedia entry about that and if you cl if you click on the encyclopedia entry you will get not the in-game information but like real world factual information written by professional historians so in that way um, the game kind of tries to really if you want to know more and if you want to know the the real uh the real facts behind that we try to uh we tried to really uh, provide you with that Mm. But but coming coming still back to the to the dialogues. Um, when reviewing the game, I talked to historian Jan Kremer, and he said, mm -hmm. one what the game does is it's also teaching about how difficult this is for historians to work. So is um, when you say if you ask the right questions, you they open up and they talk more to you. Is that also an educational goal? to teach players about how difficult it is to ask eyewitnesses about their history 
about their yeah. role in the history? Yeah, def definitely. There is, uh, there is like we, we very strong emphasis on on historical empathy, on historical empathy, kind of that you're not only trying to know what happened, but also like why, like kind of like trying to imagine the people who went through uh, the, the, the events uh, they are talking about and how, how they felt and how, you know, kind of what are their motivations, etc. So yeah, we definitely, we definitely try to do that. Uh, there is most of our, several of our historians actually are, you know, they, they, they do uh, uh, research on oral testimonies and they oftentimes go and collect the testimonies themselves or, and they actually wrote the dialogues uh, and they in many times deliberately inserted in the like openings of the dialogues the the scenes which uh, when you for example yeah when you for example when you uh when you uh approach uh, uh eyewitnesses in their homes that you have to kind of flip yeah there's like this, this period of like creating kind of a bond of trust or something and that it's, it's there in the game so it kind of teaches you i would say social empathy and, and historical mm -hmm. empathy and you have the the advantage that you can try again, which probably historians don't have because once the door is closed, they might stay closed forever. Yeah. We have a, we have a question from the from the audience or a, a comment from uh, Kubra Aksai. She really likes the style of the game, which looks like a combination of point and click and video. And she's wondering um, which video games inspired this project. Can you elaborate on that? Mm. That's actually uh, yeah. Uh, to be honest, that there is the uh, there is one there is one uh, not well known, and it's a very uh, old video game from two thousands. It's called Global Conflicts Palestine, and it's a serious game in which you you play a journalist and you arrive to Jerusalem, and your task is to write an article. And the only thing you can do in the game is that you talk to people, and they try to model like they try to populate uh, the game with uh, people of really different ethnicities, uh, Arabs, Jews, different, different religion, different, different background, and then you simply talk to them, they give you answers, and they, they are, and the game kind of tries to, t and they don't have to write the article, and the game tries to teach you not only about the extremely difficult topic, which is Israeli-Palestinian conflict, but also about uh, how, you know, news are made, how, how kind of journalism works, and what, you know, that, that by your, you're the one selecting quotes, you're the one putting the article, how kind of like that you are the, the channel through which the world kind of knew about the, the, these events. And I think the, the game, uh, the game, I think the, the basic idea behind the game is brilliant to teach you, to teach something like very complex and very contested uh, as, as this through different person perspectives. And simply it's up to the player to, uh, we, we tried in our game not to give you like kind of some overarching conclusion. So you simply have a, a memory of a lady whose family uh, died during the expulsions, uh, and you have a memory of, of someone who who was uh, who uh, thinks it was, or, or like who, who been there doing that, thinking that it's like, you know, uh, inevitable, et cetera, or historical necessity, and uh, or justified. And these two perspectives simply, we don't try to uh, kind of merge them into some, they are simply there, and it's up to you to to, uh, to kind of make your own conclusion and decision. The same goes with the communist collectivization, like uh, there, there are the kind of people justifying it because, you know, they personally were involved or, or their family was mm -hmm. involved. And so we we wanted to show the, yeah. The, yes, let's, let's come to that yeah. because okay. uh, up, up until now, you maybe have the impression it's much about movies and dialogues, but no, there is gameplay mechanics, different ones within the game. And uh, one of the strongest in my personal experience is the scene we are seeing now. It's kind of a management simulation. And well, Christian shows how you manage a farm. This for me was one of the of the biggest surprises because um, uh, this is like you are maybe an hour or half an hour into the game and you've seen many dialogues and you played some uh, like the attic before which is more like point and click and uh, I was under the impression the whole game is only that and then this start and this like has really all the mechanics not not in a very elaborate way 
but all the mechanics of uh, of the business uh, simulation. It's like SimCity in a very small way, or um, yeah, g games like that. And I was pleasantly surprised because, like, yeah, real gaming. Um, and it seemed very easy for me because you have a cycle through the year where you have to decide which crops you want to do, which tools you want to buy, and uh, what maybe you want to sell. And for, for me, it's like it really stands out from the rest of the game because it's. všichni plní optimismu. Tato se začalo dařit a brzy měl největší hospodářství ve vsi. Na podzim nám na polích ještě pomáhali Němci. Because it was really a lack of another word, a video, video gamey in a sense that uh, most of the other parties. How or why did you insert that? Well, there is, I think, uh, I don't know if you want to spoil the experience, if I can talk about the end of this I, game. Not, not I, yet? I, not yet, exactly. Okay, uh, you're right. This is actually uh, uh, we when we did attentat, uh, uh, a lot of people actually what he said that what they praised the most were of course the dialogue, the, the veracity of the dialogues and and the the, the 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 personal story which they provide, but also they really liked something we called playable memories, and those are small like segments where. Uh, you see, like most of the memories are presented in the form of an interactive black and white comics, and sometimes it switches to uh, like a small scene where you can do or you can try to do what the character did, you know, 50 years ago, and to see how you succeed. So, for example, typically uh, in Attentat, we have a scene where uh, Gestapo is knocking on your door, uh, and uh, you are in the you are in the in the uh, position of, uh, of, of Ludmilla, your grandmother, and she had few seconds to hide some. Uh, some anti-Nazi leaflets somewhere in the apartment because so, so they are not you know found during this kind of like uh, normal search after the assassination of Heidrich and you, you, there's like time pressure and you have to decide where to do it and then you will hear what like where she did, hid it because of course she hid it in a way the the, the Gestapo did not find it um, and uh, so players really appreciated that that they can like they have like uh, there was very immersive and uh, very like thrilling and we decided in Soboda we will try to go further and Komunistic we'll try to use this mechanic vyhráli volby slibovali že pole nikomu vrát nebudou a lidi jim věřili and this particular this particular game is about yeah, you playing uh, the the dad or this is this is the memory of the mayor of the lady we just talked to and uh, you are playing like in this game is her memory of her of her dad who was the richest and biggest farmer in the village and after the war after the war he uh, yeah you are playing like management simulation where your quest is simply to build uh, 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 successful and successful farm, but at the same time, on the background, real historical events are happening. So we had the elections in 1946, in which actually the Communist uh, Party won the elections, like de they won democratic elections in, in, in the Czech lands. And very soon, uh, I think we can, yeah, we can maybe wait for that. Uh, so we are trying to tell, we are trying to, to tell the story to very Classical maybe video maybe game explain what, what what's happening because it's not all classical management games. It's like you have to buy and to sell, and you have to see that this cycle works. But because uh, this is about historic facts, here is another thing: you have to meet quotas. Up in the left corner, you're seeing those quotas, and you have, apart from not going broke, have to pay this. And now, as uh, in video game circles, it's called spoiler alert. We're now telling something that if you want to experience it on your own, maybe switch off sound for like two minutes. And because what's happening is these quotas rise exorbitantly, and they rise. No, in... And they rise in a way you can't really accommodate them. Like it's it's mathematically impossible to do it. And for me, it was quite an experience because the experience switched from like playing a game to learning how a system is rigged so that you can't survive in it. In this this case, economically, but yeah, maybe in other cases more, more yeah. so. 
that's that's exactly what you said like uh, so it uh, the, the, there were monetary quotas uh, uh, after the war for like so even during the democratic government uh, the the uh, uh, the farmers had to meet the quotas because yeah because of the shortages but when communists took power by uh, you know they staged a coup uh, essentially it was it was a putsch when they took power they started to um, they started to organize uh, kolkhozes like like you know collective farms which are, you know from from uh, eastern germany too and they tried to force uh, like uh, the particularly the big farmers to join this this these this, this, this collective farms, and they wanted to kind of um, force them to join voluntarily. So what they did was they they used the system of quotas, which was already there, but they used it to essentially blackmail and um, yeah put pressure on the farmers. So the quotas are still higher and higher, and you can't really meet them. Uh, so you have to sell stuff. Also, the and all this this happening in the game is based with like. Again, thousands and thousands of testimonies of farmers who, because they did not meet the quotas or because they refused to join the equality farms, they were sent to labor camps or their family was, you know, uh, uh, sent to completely the different, different and remote regions of, of Czechoslovakia. So what is also happening? We, we can, so we show these mechanisms of, uh, of uh, we show these mechanics of, uh, I don't know, kind of um, US through the game mechanics. So for example, in, in reality, typically you can buy a tractor uh, in the game, and in reality. After the communist putsch, they can come to you and say, "This year, the tractor has, will be first used for the collective farm, and then will be given to you." And of course, you know it's too late for you because the harvest is over, or your field will be, you will be, the field will be taken from you, and you will be given a new field. But it's a completely remote region, and it's much harder to, much harder to, to plow, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And these things were happening. So, like, kind of, it was one by one the farmers, uh, either. Uh, didn't meet the quotas and been punished, fined, and if they can't meet the fine, they can be sentenced to to labor, to 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 to, to, to like to, to prison, or or they finally they finally joined the the, the collective farms, which uh, is yeah, happening here. I think. založili JZD. Několik menších sedláků do něj vstoupilo, ale táta nechtěl. So this this is. Uh... Now we have an in-depth look in, into another pillar of the gameplay mechanics and one last thing is missing. And the time, the Second World War and the time before and also after that is also a time of atrocities. And it's difficult to portray them in a game, in an educational context, but you did it and we now want to have a look at one of those examples. This is one, one of the moments where there is shown uh, a murder. And of course there were more things, the expulsions, mass graves and so on. And all this is also part of the game every time in this style, in this black and white animation. Why did you decide to even depict that? And why did you decide to do it in the way you did? Yeah, so as I like, sometimes the people are like, talking to you, and sometimes we show the memories uh, in the form of a yeah of a graphic novel, and we decided to do that uh, first, as I said, to kind of uh, uh, make sure that you know that we 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 show that, what, that this is actually constructed that we are sometimes using real 
like archive footage to document the kind of well-known real events and the intimate personal events we are showing through graphic novels. So, so we, you, you know, this is our construct. Uh, but typically, uh, we use that for some uh, dramatic or maybe even like emotionally charged or, or you know, uh, ethically charged uh, um, uh, events. So, uh, because it's, it's, I would say it's easier because you can like, it's, it's not that graphic and you can also kind of, um, uh, you don't need to depict everything. You like the comics works, uh, the comics we know that it's a very suitable medium for very intimate and personal stories, even the most traumatic ones since, you know, since Spiegelman and Mouse, we know that the medium is capable of doing that. And, uh, and so what you saw just here is actually, there was the, this, this, this man, uh, this man who is like, like the local, local teacher and, and uh, amateur historian. And the brother of the mayor, they, at the end of the war, they went to uh, just, you know, they just uh, waved the Czechoslovak flag uh, because the war was officially over. And there was a like German unit passing by uh, to they're, they're fleeing the Russians and they wanted to get to the Western Western uh, Western um, uh, allies, and they just basically aimlessly and kind of randomly shoot at the at the, at the flag and they kill the boy. Uh, and that, since that since that moment, there is like a huge kind of uh, not a feud, but it's still pretty much present between the two families, between the family of the teacher, and because he, he was actually the one who it was his idea to do that. It was his idea to to go there and wave the flag, and the brother of the mayor was killed, uh, and it's still it's still an issue between between them. And this the village is full of these issues, and and uh, we try to kind of incorporate them and show also how uh, not only these things happen, but how um, uh, they affect the contemporary life uh, of, of uh, they influence the contemporary life of the village. Most of these events are, are, are well documented. So this actually happened, uh, the, the, the story is actually happened, but happened, you know, not to character, our characters' pictures, but we have memory, exactly mm -hmm. the same memory we have from some eyewitness. And we are showing in the very same way that there are death marches uh, just before the end of the war. There were death marches going through the village, which again, is we have like testimonies on that. And also after the war, uh, the so-called wild expulsions where the immediately after the war, where, you know, the uh, kind of um, um, armed militias and, and a number of people like gathered up and rounded up the Germans, beat them, and you know, uh, send them to send them to a camp where many of them were actually killed. It's it's, it's actually uh, the postal party postal party um, uh, massacre, which is again very well documented. So, and we decided to show these uh, events, uh, yeah, through uh, through graphic novel because it's uh, from our experience, it, it it works and it's kind of capable of of transmitting the emotional um, uh, the emotional scenes without kind of uh, uh without making them too graphic or too i don't know um, uh, you can uh, yeah again you can choose what to not show in the comics you can what, what to, mm. to uh, I, I, and, and it, it generally worked for us in attentat and i think it's uh it, it worked in uh, it worked in um in liberation game so ma many different perspectives uh, on the history one can experience as a player. I now want to pull in Christian, uh, because Christian, you are not only our great Let's Player today, but you are also the project lead for Remembrance with Games at the Foundation of Digital Games Culture, which is a project which is uh, developing guidelines and concrete projects about testimony and computer games and how they can work together from your standpoint as the project lead for this project what do you think about this game how does it add to the discussion swoboda uh, 1945 and attentat uh, 1942 have become kind of go-to examples of, of best practice for us. So last year, we, we developed key questions to help game designers or to give them a little bit of orientation when they plan to develop a game that, for example, deals with uh, the Nazi regime. Uh, and Svoboda 1945 answers these questions, <laughs> these 10 questions, very good, for example, how it deals with multi-perspectivity in contested history, lets people talk from different perspectives. And then uh, the game, the mini game, we saw the farming mini game. That's also one of the questions we ask game developers who want to create games that deal with history, how they plan to use innovative rule systems to uh, help 
uh, further the understanding of, of specific events in history. So with the book, you can tell a very straightforward linear history. But when you look at this mini game, it, it teaches you how difficult it, uh, it must have been to be a farmer um, under the circumstances having to uh, having to uh, fulfill the quota but in the end you just can't and this is something that a book can tell you but in a video game you get to experience it at least a little bit by feeling the same frustration when you realize you this is you can only lose this game so yeah uh, Swoboda uh, 1945 is a really great example for us of how games could in also in the future um yeah, uh, represent history, contested history. We created a database for such games this year um, where we uh, showcase a lot of games that we think are uh, relevant to remembrance culture. Uh, Swoboda 1945 is not a part of it yet, but it will be very soon. Attentat 1942 is. Yeah, and we hope that in the future there will be a lot more games like this that we can present in our database and that we can show uh, as part uh, or as an example in our um, uh, initiative Remembrance with Games. So I'm really looking forward to the future of uh, presenting history in games. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. And that leads me to my last questions for you with, <coughs> excuse me, um, more games. Of course, this is in a global way, but I heard rumors that this might not be the last game in a series. Do you plan anything beyond uh, Svoboda 1945 Liberation? Yeah, we would love to actually make a third, uh, third game, uh, which is, we have like some 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 uh, matches are already done. The doubts are written, but like it's really way to go in terms of production and and finances, uh, which should be about the communist times. So we would like really like to make a game about Stalinism in Czechoslovakia about the fifties, but then also about the uh, Prague Spring, nineteen sixty eight, and the seventies, the so called normalization. So the game could cover like a larger time span because it really doesn't make sense to make a game only about, for example, fifties, where it will show the kind of the whole communist times starting with the Stalinist repression. Then, you know, the kind of Prague Spring and the hope of, you know, socialism is a new phase. And then how in the 70s, the communist regime again entrenched itself and persecuted people. And then, of course, yeah, the Velvet Revolution and how, 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 how everything kind of, uh, kind of um, uh, developed. So, yeah, we would definitely like to use this format because we have so many, so many, so many like testimonies. And I would say, uh, yeah, my, my kind of final point is that video games are a great medium to tell stories. And around us are really, or in our history, are really, really important stories to be told. And I think video games are a great medium for that. So um, because they can really reach a um, uh, different audience. Uh, and uh, to the, the power of games, uh, it's kind of like the question I think we, we left um, the, the, the last conversation, is uh, that uh, there is something called popular history. And it means like, essentially, after you leave school, if you're not professionally engaged with history, you typically get most of your kind of imagination about certain historical events and places through, I don't know, either you consume books or you consume movies, you know, for maybe uh, our generation was movies, for previous generation, these were historical books. But for current generation, more and more, uh, more and more, uh, the source of popular history are video games. And so for me, it really matters that you try to do them, like, you know, as accurate and as, uh, as, uh, as, uh, multifaceted as, as possible to show different perspectives and different different viewpoints. Witt Schisler, thank you very much for this in-depth look in the game Svoboda 1945 Liberation. Christian Hubert, thank you for playing uh, and your recommendation. And dear audience, if you have any chance to play this game, please do it from personal experience. <coughs> Not only from this talk here, I can really uh, recommend it. So thank you very much for being here and back to you, Fiona. Thank you so much, Markus, for moderating these two sessions. And thank you so much, uh, Viet and Christian, for joining, joining us and giving us these insights uh, into the game. 
And uh, I want to take uh, Marco's recommendation seriously. Uh, for those of you who have received a goodie bag um, of us, there was a license included. But uh, if you have not yet received uh, it or um, you were not one of our first hundred uh, registrants, then um, I have a little extra special uh, for you because we do have some licenses. So please get in touch via email and we can send uh, the license out to you so you can um, get frustrated by not meeting quotas and explore or a contested history and see what this um, medium serious game of gaming um, can do for history. So don't hesitate to get in touch. Um, I can also recommend checking out uh, the the projects tab uh, again to see get more insight into the games and the other studios and other projects and also um, I can invite you if you want to present your project uh, write us an email and we'll set you up so all the participants um, can take a look at your project. Um, in addition to the projects tab and the participants tab that you have already uh, discovered, there should be a new tab um, appearing at the top of your screen if you're watching on a computer or um, on your phones or on the app as well. And that's the networking tab. And what I want to do right now is invite you to a truly interactive experience. I know we, we have the, the chat um, and you see, see us, but we want to see you, get to know you. So uh, please head over um, to the networking tab and join us in a video conference. Share a little bit about yourself, get to know other participants, and let's just connect and hang, hang out. Um, the next session um, here at this space will be at 3.45 and um, it will be um, a very immersive experience. So we will take a look at augmented reality, at virtual reality and um, in particular what these extended reality tools can do for us in highlighting marginalized um, histories. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you again for the speakers of today's um, session and I hope to see you soon in the networking tab or later at our augmented reality and virtual reality session. Thank you. Thank you for.